Welcome everyone again to RTO on Zoom. Hallelujah. We will continue on this adventuring journey that we have been going the last few weeks as we are praying with Peter and praying like Peter because we want to be able to follow his example for the last 30 years of his Christian revival that he experienced after Jesus restored him. Amen. So here's our title for tonight. The pure milk of the gospel. The pure milk of the gospel with a subtitle, which you're going to see now on the screen. No milk, no peace. No milk, no peace. More about that later. Here is the word that I'm going to give you tonight. But before I do that, I want you to imagine. Imagine as you close your eyes right now. Uh, seeing, tasting, and drinking the pure milk of the gospel flowing out with great force and abundance that is unlimited from the all delicious and living word of God. Amen? Now listen carefully to the word that I'm going to give you now from the word of God to what the apostle Peter has to say about his delicious, this Delicious and nutritious cold, pure milk found in First Peter chapter 1, verses 25 through chapter 2, 1 through 3. Here we go. You're also going to see that on the screen. But the word of the Lord endures forever. Now this is the word which by the gospel was preached to you. Therefore, laying aside all malice. All deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking, as newborn as newborn babes, desire, say with me, desire, desire the pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Taste it. I want to focus tonight on verse 2, which once again says, As newborn babes desire, say it with me again, desire. We want for the Holy Spirit tonight to open a desire, an appetite for this pure milk of the Word of God. So as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the Word, that you may grow thereby. Please look now at the screen. What do you see? You see, you're going to see a very hungry and desperate baby reaching for and eager to be drinking the milk, drinking the milk like there's no tomorrow. A new baby is required to drink milk several times per day. And if one forgets to give that baby the milk, that baby will let you know by crying and crying, as you see on the screen, and crying some more louder and louder until the baby gets that milk because that baby is going to get into your nerves and he's going to get what he wants. Therefore, as we began this message, no milk, no milk, no peace. I even made a little sign for myself which you're going to see on the screen. No milk, no peace. Because until that baby don't get that milk, there will be no peace between the baby and the parent or the grandparent or the responsible person to give the milk to that baby. If we have no milk from the Word of God, we are not going to have peace with God either. Because the word of God is the one that will bring reconciliation between us and the Father. Peace with us and the, as we drink from that word of God, that pure milk of the word of God. And therefore, there will be no peace either between us and our neighbors. That's why we see so much turmoil everywhere. You see, reconciliation is at the heart of the gospel. And the gospel flows out of the word of God. The purest milk for a newborn baby is from the mother's breast. That's the purest milk. However, if that's not possible, 
the next best milk is the one that we buy at the store and we put it in the bottle to give to the baby as we saw on that picture earlier now. There's a clear connection and a strong bridge here in verse two from, from 1 Peter chapter two and with 1 Peter 1 23 with how a born again Christian believer must be fed. Listen again to 1 Peter 1 23. I quote, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Hallelujah. Here is the truth and the reality that Peter really wants us to know and check to make sure that we drink in that pure milk so we can keep the main thing, the main thing to deal with the reality of our new birth experience. Listen carefully now. Peter, the Apostle Peter is saying to us right now that what distinguishes and characterizes a newborn again Christian believer is his or her compelling craving and healthy desperation. Like we saw that baby reaching for that bottle, crying because he was hungry. He needed to have that fix, that milk, that healthy desperation, an unwavering desire for the pure milk of the Word of God many times per day, day and night. That baby needs to have that milk day and night. In and also in the afternoon. In other words, the pure milk of the Word of God is essential and critical for a newborn again Christian believer and for his and her growth, a strength, satisfaction, and maturity, or better yet, as a requirement for Christians with no more excuses. Peter is saying in 1 Peter 1.15 that Christians must become holy in all of our conduct. And the pure milk would empower us to be holy in all of our conduct as the word of God requires of us to become. So Peter is saying that we must stop trying. We could try all we want, but unless we drink the milk, the pure milk of the word of God, we could try all we want ain't going to happen. Therefore, we must just do it. We must just drink the milk that is required for us Christians. No more excuses. That's what Peter is saying to us. It is that radical craving type hunger for the pure milk of the Word of God that sets apart and differentiates a real newborn again believer from the fake one. Like we saw last time with my mentor, Chuck Colson, his experience, uh, that he experienced his new birth. He was born again. A newborn again Christian believer must desire the pure milk of the word because there will be a time when this baby will need to, and we want to also add solid food to his over diet, the incontrollable craving that must be satisfied exclusively with the pure milk of the word of God by the newborn again baby believer. It is a clear indicator and convincing evidence of his over true newborn new birth experience. You see, powder, powder milk, no synthetic milk from the world will not do any good. The baby believer needs the pure milk of the word of God. You know that, uh, that one of the many things that Fidel Castro, or you may not know, but I'm gonna tell you now, one of the many things that Fidel Castro, now he's dead, the former Cuban Marxist communist dictator of Cuba, uh, my homeland, where I was born and raised and I was formed in my most formative years, Fidel Castro promised the people first with the hook of becoming a socialist, with the hook 
when he first got into power was that everyone in Cuba would be able to drink the pure milk from the cow that was going to be coming out from the faucet of the kitchen sink. So Fidel Castro gave the Cuban people false, fake hope from false dreams that interferes with honest living that the socialist, Marxist, and communist system are incapable to fulfill. Promises that cannot be kept. Only Jesus has kept and will keep all of his promises because him and the Father are one, and everything that the Father has promised, they are yes and amen in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So as a credible witness, who lifted, that is me, lifting Cuba, experienced the system, experienced what was happening. Here is what actually happened. Let me tell you what actually happened. No one got to drink any pure milk from the cow. Not even a drop of pure milk came through the kitchen faucet. Not even one drop ever came. It was only promises, false hope. And many are giving false hope to people and people need to understand that without the true hope of the glory of Christ Jesus, nothing of any significance will happen to anybody. And that hope comes when we drink the pure milk of the word of God that will give us complete satisfaction. You see, only children in Cuba of one to seven years old could drink powder milk when only when it was available. That is socialism, Marxism, communism at its best, at its best. Here is a radical and practical but simple application, as well as the urgency and relevancy for this message right now. Here it is. Become desperate, pray it, beg God the Father, cry to Him. Become desperate. That's called a healthy desperation. Become desperate to crave for the pure milk of the Word of God and keep drinking the pure milk of the Word of God that flows that flows with great power from the word of God without limitation. So drink, drink, and drink some more. The more we drink, the stronger and better equipped we will become. And whenever you ask the Father for that milk, he'll give it to you. It's always available, always available. You can drink it until you will be fully satisfied. You be you will be full to the brim, amen. So, do not forget to drink often. The strength and credibility of our life and lifestyle that's important. Now, what we say is what we do, the way that we live. You see, the way that we conduct ourselves, be holy in all of our conduct. Uh, the strength and credibility of our life and lifestyle depends on it depends on the milk so we can fight for our joy and the joy of others with unwavering strength people need to see strength in christians today and might especially during these critical times we are living right now you see this pure milk from the word of god must make our hearts compassionate compassionate we must become compassionate for all that we see today, we have to suffer with those who are suffering and, and our minds to become strong like Christ's mind and to become healthier. And that pure milk will do it like a mighty, fearless warrior to feel and to think biblically like Jesus, not like the world, but to prepare us to add solid food to our diet so we can eat solid food and keep drinking the pure milk, the perfect combination, the explosive combination 
for growth and maturity. So this world, this this worldly, worldly and daily culture will not swallow us like it is doing with so many today. I know many adults that drink the, the milk with their main meal, with the black beans and rice and the roast pork and the tostones and maduros, you know, or, or the ropa vieja, you know, that's Cuban food. And then they drink the milk to put that food down. And the milk is the other food now that you use to supplement the solid food, but both foods are needed for us to be able to grow and to mature. So in conclusion, listen please very carefully to this very prophetic word from the Apostle Paul here in 1 Corinthians 3, 1 through 3. Here it is. Because now Peter is asking Paul to second what he's been talking about. You see, they're both apostles. They're both in the same boat. They both live together. They both were ministering to the people, one to the to Gentiles and one to the Jewish, but they were both ministering to the people, to the church. And I, brethren, Paul says, could not speak to you as a spiritual people, but as to colonel, colonel, as to babes, First Peter 2, 2, in Christ, verse 2, I fed you with milk and now with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it, and even now you're still not able. And you must ask yourself, why not? We have to eat the solid food and drink the milk now. Verse 3, for you are still kernel. You're still kernel. You are in the carne, in the flesh. We're still behaving on our own power. There's no strength in our flesh. There's no strength in our kernel. Our strength comes from the word of God, the pure milk of the word of God. For where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, and there are many now, as we see it, it's before our eyes. There's fights and feuds everywhere in the church. And remember, as the church goes, America goes. As the church goes, America goes. We have to set the pattern. We have to set the example. We have to be leading in front with Jesus Christ and the pure milk that comes from the word of God. We have to be leaving that word. Hallelujah. There are many captives today to ignorance. And we have to live by example by showing them this pure milk of the word of God and give it to them too. For where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? For when one says, I am of Paul, and another one says, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? See, we arguing and fighting for what is not important. Let's deal with the real injustices. Let's real, let's, 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 let's become all things to all people. And let's enter into people's suffering by becoming a house of prayer. God is calling the church to provide the pure milk and the food that we need to be able to be energized through becoming a house of prayer, Christ's house of prayer. To see revival happen. We need to see revival. This might be the time for revival to happen in the midst of this crisis that we experience with COVID-19 and we see what unrest. Let's keep it real. Let's be, let's be 100%. Let's keep it real. Let's just keep it real. Amen? Finally, let me say that this biblical and explosive gospel this biblical and explosive gospel Peter is presenting to us, which flows out of the word of God with irresistible force, is a very radical and transforming gospel, as I know because I experience it, and I continue to experience it. I continue to be transformed. Hence, Peter is calling us Christians right now to, number one, to humble ourselves. You know, humility is to a Christian like, like garlic is to Cuban black beans is the main ingredient. Hallelujah! 
Number two, he's calling the church to repent. Peter had to repent to Jesus, and then he experienced revival. Number three, we must focus on the cross. Focus on the cross. And Peter, Peter died, as you have heard me say before, upside down, crucified on a cross. That's amazing. We have to focus, embrace, and love, and cherish the cross of Christ. Because that's the power lies in that cross. And through that cross, that's our identity. Remember, I'm not Cuban. I am a Christian that happens to be Cuban. Amen? Number four, I become compelled by the love of Christ. Become compelled by the love of Christ. And number five, equip ourselves equip yourselves with the fullness of the truth and grace of jesus christ why because we have to live out the radical legacy of the life of christ the perfect one somebody an anchor from cnn was saying that i oh, heard that christ was not perfect oh yes he is christ lived a perfect life for 33 years on the earth he became as the perfect man. He was perfect. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's still perfect. He's going to come back on a white horse as perfect. The perfect Savior. The perfect Son of God. The only begotten one. My older brother. Hallelujah. My Lord and Savior. My complete satisfaction. Yes, he is Messiah. Yes, he is perfect. The people need to hear that truth. That truth is uncompromising. And we cannot be unwavering from that truth. We need to speak up. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Jesus, the perfect one, the only begotten Son of God the Father who was born of a virgin. I'm giving you the gospel now. Who fulfilled his required mission. He died and bled to death in our place on our cross to our peace. Yes, his father justifiable wrath. We have committed the most treason, injustice against God and we keep doing it and he's patient with us. We have committed an injustice against God, the father, and we need to deal with that. But we couldn't do it. So God the Father sent the perfect one, Jesus, to die on the cross where his justice of God and his mercy reconcile and kiss. That is the message that the people need to hear and see in us today in America. This is urgent. We are not playing games. The cross and Christ have to be proclaimed along with his resurrection. Hallelujah. There's power in Christ Jesus. Jesus rose from the dead. To why? To defeat death forever that enter into the world through Adam and Eve, you see? Because of their sin that became our sin, Amen. Jesus had to come. So we will then become a new born again baby, a hundred percent sold out for Christ and his kingdom. So we must drink. So we must drink. We have an option. So we must drink and drink the pure milk of the word of God many times daily. Why? To energize us to recharge us, to reboot us, to live not just the life of Christ somehow, but rather live the abundant life of Christ triumphantly. We are to be going from victory to victory, not going back to Egypt, not hiding from reality. The gospel is a real message from a real person for a real crisis 
to turn the crisis into a revival that we desperately need in America. So I'm calling the church in America to come to the cross and find the identity. We need to be united and together around the cross, around Christ, around one message is called the gospel that Peter is, is saying here in First Peter and he's calling the church out. Come on, church, come on. Let's, let's do it for his glory, triumphantly, with an impeccable, consistent credibility and commitment for the greater Halloween of our Father. Let's not bring him any more shame. Let's arise and go down to the people's levels and enter into their deep suffering People are hurting in America, in the church. They are in pain. They, have, they are losing hope. They're committing suicide. Oh, Father, I pray that you would help us. There's much confusion in millions of Americans who are hurting, are hurting deeply inside the church, uh, driven by anxiety, by anger, by fear they are desperate to know the truth and we have the answer let's not give them half truth let's give them the whole truth let's be courageous like joshua they need to know who the real jesus is they need to see the real jesus in us they need to find out why this Christ came. You see, I was blind, but now I see, hallelujah. I was dead, but now I'm alive. I was lost, and now I've been found. That is the message coupled with your testimony. Like Chuck Colson, we have to have a testimony, and we have to have a life, the life of Christ. We have no life. We have now the life of Christ in us. We could not give our life to him, nor our hearts to him, because our hearts were weaker, you see. He gave us his life. He gave us his heart. He gave us, he gave us the way, the truth, the life, so we can live in freedom every day. You see, he wants for the house, his house that he purchased with his blood on the cross. Every drop on the cross counted. You see, he purchased, he purchased the house, the church. So the church, us, can humble ourselves, embrace the cross, anchor at the cross our conscience, and become the house of prayer that the people in America need now so desperately. For other nations, because they are here including the nation of prison. Hallelujah. Let us pray. So thank you, Father, for this message, this passionate message of the word of God that came from the word of God that Peter is giving us today, Father, that we are commanded and required to drink the pure milk of the word. Father, I pray that you will ignite in us a uncontrollable desire for that milk, that we will want that milk many times a day, even in the middle of the night, that we will be dreaming and thinking and craving for that milk. Father, I pray that you will infuse that desire and that craving in us, Father, and that we will be a compelling example of the gospel for many to see. Father, we want to be magnetic we don't want to be hypocritical like we read also in the text here father we want to keep it real we want to be the same all the time growing and maturity in christ father the people need to see that there's a real christ who has the real answer for such a time like this in jesus name amen hallelujah thank you for listening and thank you for viewing it i love you appreciate you Amen.